Ever since the launch of Voyager 3, CD Projekt Red has seen something of a meteoric growth, both in terms of audience goodwill as well as the company's finances. They've just been incredibly successful critically and commercially. And this has in large part to do with the fact that they make high quality games and respect the customers and actually are very consumer friendly in their business model while delivering incredible games. Witcher 3 is still considered one of the best, if not the best among many RPGs ever created. And so we saw back in February 2020 that Witcher 3 had made 50 million US dollars on Steam, which meant that they can now get a higher revenue cut from Steam, given their new policy surrounding how revenue cut is distributed. And we saw also that in January 2020, the sales for Witcher 3 and the concurrent players just skyrocketed at 103,000 just on Steam alone. 103,000 concurrent players, which is more than what it was at launch when it was at 92,268 concurrent players. No doubt Xbox, PlayStation, and then the uh, recently released uh, Switch version all experienced a similar growth. And that led to CD Projekt Red seeing uh, physical sales increasing by 554% for Witcher 3, all of which had no doubt had in large part to do with the release of the Netflix show that was hugely popular and introduced a host of new people to the series and therefore to the novels and the games. And then Games Industry right here reported that Witcher 3 second biggest year drive CD Projekt revenues to 124.7 million. And the combination of all these factors also led to CD Projekt Red becoming the second biggest video game company in Europe, as reported by GameSpot in February of 2020. But guess what, folks? CD Projekt Red's value continues to climb. The hype surrounding Cyberpunk 2077, the continued sales of Witcher 3, the general good optics surrounding the company and its potential success. It's all contributing to the company's value continuously rising. And now we're at a point where we're seeing CD Projekt Red being evenly matched with gaming giant Ubisoft. So here's a tweet from Pavel Sasko who said it would have been impossible without you and links to an article by news outlet Gameplay Mechanics whose headline reads CD Projekt has surpassed Ubisoft to become Europe's most valuable video game company. So here is the body of the article. The CD Projekt Group, which includes Witcher 3 Wild Hunt developer CD Projekt Red and digital distribution platform GOG, skyrocketed again on Monday, officially surpassing Ubisoft to become the most valuable video game company in Europe. You read that right. The award-winning company that gave us the Witcher trilogy is currently larger than the French tech giant in terms of market capitalization. At the time of this writing, Ubisoft is worth 7.82 billion euros, while CD Projekt's market value is estimated at a higher 8.01 billion euros. Now, it is emphasized right here that while CD Projekt Red's market value might be just a little above Ubisoft as of the writing of this article, Ubisoft still consistently makes more money, more revenue than CD Projekt Red. As an example, it is highlighted how in 2019, CD Projekt Red posted revenue of 521 million Polish currency, whereas Ubisoft netted significantly more with 1.89 billion Polish currency, or the equivalent of around 416.2 million euros in the third quarter of fiscal year 2019 alone. So that's a significant difference right there. But it should be noted that Ubisoft, because of its more widespread and larger operations, they probably expend a lot more money than CD Projekt Red does. And there's also the fact that market value is determined by where the investor wind blows, you know, investors, they kind of invest in companies that have good optics, that have good potential for growth. And so, you know, CD Projekt Red is having a good set of years right now, whereas Ubisoft has had something of a lull year because so many of their games were delayed recently. Though, uh, it is noted by this article that titles like, you know, Watch Dogs Legion, Gods and Monsters, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Quarantine, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and a yet-to-be-revealed title, reportedly a new Far Cry game, are in the works and set to be released in this fiscal year. And that's bound to generate a lot of revenue and a lot of, you know, 
hype for investors who are eager to see the company grow and make money that way. Uh, so there is no doubt that this is a fluctuating situation where Ubisoft might, you know, after the release of all of these games, eventually surpass E Project Red again. Then again, this year, Cyberpunk 2077 is launching. Apparently, pre-order numbers are already higher than Witcher 3's when that game launched. And so they are in a pretty good place, though one has to wonder whether Cyberpunk 2077 alone will be able to surpass the revenues that will be generated by, you know, Watch Dogs Legion, Gods and Monsters, Rainbow Six Quarantine, and Valhalla all combined together. It seems doubtful, but no doubt 2077 will be one of the biggest sellers of 2020. And no doubt it is going to increase the positive optics surrounding the company and it's probably going to draw in investors. But because Ubisoft is ultimately a bigger company with larger operations, with more things going on at the same time, it is likely that should these endeavors succeed, we'll see Ubisoft kind of surpass CD Projekt Red once more, you know, down the line. But the fact that CD Projekt Red can kind of stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ubisoft at all is a pretty damn impressive feat, given this is a company that has only produced and published a handful of games in the past couple of years, mainly the Witcher series of video games, with Witcher 3 kind of making up for a huge portion of CD Projekt Red's revenues and profits. So for a company with so few game releases to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ubisoft in its lull years, that's still an incredibly impressive feat that highlights just the staying power of CD Projekt Red's few games. CD Projekt Red chooses quality over quantity, and it's worked wonders for them. And even if CD Projekt Red surpassing Ubisoft in market value doesn't last forever, the fact that they even are in a position like this is, I mean, it's pretty unreal. Further highlighting the bigger picture of this situation is gamesindustry.biz, which talked about how, yes, CD Projekt Red did surpass Ubisoft on May 19th in terms of market value, but it may not be for much longer. It is stated right here that on May 19th, the Polish company had a market capitalization of 8.01 billion euros, while Ubisoft had a lower number of 7.82 billion euros. But it is noted that by May 20th, those roles had already reversed with Ubisoft just ahead of CD Projekt Red in terms of market capitalization. And then today, referring to May 21st, 2020, the situation has reversed again with CD Projekt Red climbing back up to around 8.4 billion euros, a shade ahead of Ubisoft on 8.38 billion. Check back tomorrow and the situation may very well be different again. The point being that market value is constantly fluctuating, and if you look at Ubisoft at their peak, you know, CD Projekt Red has yet to achieve anywhere close to that, but because of Ubisoft being in more of a lull year in the past few months, their market value has dropped significantly, and that's allowed CD Projekt Red's steady rise to catch up to them, but... There is always a fluctuating nature to all this. Given how close they are right now in terms of market capitalization, they're kind of going to go back and forth probably over the next few days. And then once 2077 and Ubisoft's, you know, three or four major AAA titles release, then we'll probably see that market value fluctuate further. With Ubisoft, because they have more games and more potential sales from those four titles that they're working on in parallel, they will likely eventually see a significant growth. To that effect, the article highlights any single day on the stock market is a far from reliable source to back up broad statements about definitive value. Stock prices change from hour to hour, and that is further complicated by fluctuating exchange rates. By the time the report is written, the numbers have already changed. The article then highlights how 2019, while a good year for CD Projekt Red, isn't the best CD Projekt Red has seen. So in 2019, the company earned around 115 million euros. But in 2015 and 2016, so the year that Witcher 3 and its expansions released. In 2015, the company made 176 million euros, and in 2016, they made 129 million euros. So they made less in 2019, and yet still, stocks for the company are steadily rising. And that has again to do with 
optics surrounding the company, the potential that investors see in the company for potential growth, especially with all the positive reception surrounding CD Projekt as a company and as a game developer, and the hype surrounding Cyberpunk 2077 and the great sales that the title will no doubt achieve. Now, Ubisoft, despite making a lot more money than CD Projekt Red does, at least in terms of revenue, which is different from profit, but in terms of revenue, they made 1.59 billion euros in the last fiscal year, which is down 14% in what the company acknowledged was a lackluster year for releases because October of 2019, they delayed their three biggest upcoming products, Watch Dogs Legion, Gods and Monsters, and Rainbow Six Siege Quarantine, which left the fiscal year without several expected highlights and prompted a crash in its stock price. So it's all about perception, all about optics. Honestly, one announcement that investors don't like is enough to tank stock prices for any company. It's an ever fluctuating, a very fickle mistress, if you will. And so you can see in the graph here that on October of 2019, we saw a sort of big dip in stock price because of those delays and because of Ubisoft's inability to profit as much as they could have had those titles released that year because of the delays where CD Projekt Red, things are still kind of going as planned. And so there's still a steady rise. And with the Netflix show releasing and which are three kind of continuing to be so successful and seeing a, a huge climb in player base and resulting in CD Projekt Red making a significant amount of money in uh, 2019, all of that's contributing to a climb because there's a level of confidence in the company's growth. The article then highlights how CD Projekt Red has never traded at a higher price than it does right now, meaning that currently we're seeing peak CD Projekt Red. Their market value continues to grow and it is the highest we have seen from the company ever. But it is noted that CD Projekt Red at their current peak still falls far short of Ubisoft at its recent peak meaning that when Ubisoft is performing well, their market value will be significantly higher than CD Projekt Red's. And so once Ubisoft gets out of the rut they're currently in, once they release the big AAA games they got working right now, yeah, uh, CD Projekt Red will likely return to number two. And while Cyberpunk 2077 is gonna be one of the biggest hits this year, maybe by itself, you know, be more successful than any one of the individual games that Ubisoft is launching. If you take all of the games Ubisoft is releasing and combine them, and then compare that to the financial results of Cyberpunk 2077 by itself, it is unlikely that one game will surpass the performance of five combined. Regardless of what the future of both of these companies' market value might look like, kudos to CD Projekt Red for being able to get to this point. Even if they're number one in market capitalization in Europe for only a couple days, the fact that they're able to be in that position at all without kind of relying on the shadier, nickel and dime style business models like Ubisoft does, the fact that they're able to achieve this much success through consumer friendliness, through high quality products, like it all goes to show that that model works. And while it may never end up ultimately being as profitable as the freaking loot boxes and the shady microtransactions, uh, it is still a viable business strategy through which you can achieve great success. So yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know about the current state of CD Projekt Red. Suffice to say that they're doing pretty well for themselves and I think for the right reasons, which is great to see. Let me know in the comments below what your take is on all of this and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.